So we will be covering the presentation with a brief introduction of pathogenesis, diagnostic parameters, scoring systems, the detail of the liver biopsy role or histological evaluation with few representative cases, and what was our SGPJ experience. So I now, now invite Dr. Rahul to start the presentation. Autoimmune hepatitis, as we all know, is an inflammatory disease which is caused due to an aberrant immune response directed against the liver tissue. It is known to affect individuals of all age groups, races, and ethnicities with more predilection towards females. Autoimmune hepatitis can have variable clinical presentation, the most common being oligosymptomatic mild to moderate chronic disease. However, 30% of patients can also present as acute icteric hepatitis, and the rest 20% presents as asymptomatic disease with lately diagnosed cryptogenic cirrhosis. Coming to the pathogenesis, autoimmune hepatitis uh, uh, pathogenesis is a combined effect of genetic factors or altered immunocytes and molecular mimicry mechanisms. Loss of tolerance against the patient's own liver tissue is regarded as the underlying cause of this disease process. This is the pictorial representation of the patho underlying pathogenesis of autoimmune hepatitis. So, the antigenic peptide binds to the class 2 MHC molecule of antigen presenting cells, which then binds to the CD4 helper T cells, which acts as the first signal for its activation. Now, the binding of B7 molecule on the antigen presenting cells to the CD8, CD28 molecules on the helper T cells acts as the second signal for the activation of helper T cells. So, once these helper T cells are activated, they produce two types of cytokine responses. So the first type of cytokine response uh, causes the clonal expansion of CD8 cytotoxic T cells, which are responsible for the hepatocyte injury and the release of these diverse antibodies. And the second type of cytokine response is responsible for the recruitment of the plasma cells, which produce IgG immunoglobulin. These immunoglobulins cause antibody-mediated cellular toxicity. So the di diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis will depend on the extent of liver injury, the presence of these diverse antibodies and the immunoglobulin IgG levels. Diagnosis is difficult because of the absence of any signal, uh, single diagnostic marker and due to very variable clinical presentation. So the combination of clinical and laboratory features are required. Autoimmune hepatitis should always be considered in the differential diagnosis of patients which present with liver, elevated liver enzymes or unexplained cirrhosis at any age. And other causes of liver disease, such as viral hepatitis, Wilson's disease, uh, biliary diseases, etc., should always be ruled out. This is the diagnostic algorithm for the liver disease of unknown origin. So the, uh, it is recommended to investigate for the primary antibodies, such as ANA, SMA, LKM, and SLA. And if any of these are positive, autoimmune hepatitis should be considered and liver biopsy is recommended. However, if this primary antibody panel is negative and there is a strong clinical suspicion, a repeat panel is a repeat panel along with an extended panel is recommended before ruling out autoimmune hepatitis. Also, a zero negative autoimmune hepatitis can be considered in such a scenario. Now, coming to the scoring system for the diagnosis of hepat autoimmune hepatitis, the diagnosis is mainly based on clinical, biochemical, serological, and histological parameters. So, based on this. The scoring, uh, the scoring system was given by International Autoimmune Hepatitis Group in 1993, which was revised in 1999 with 11 parameters. And in 2008, another scoring system proposed was the simplified scoring system, which had a greater specificity and predictability. However, the sensitivity of simplified scoring system is le lesser than the revised scoring system. Now, this simplified scoring system is the most popular among the clinician and the pathologist for the diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis. So coming to the detail of the simplified scoring system, it consists of four parameters, the levels of these autoantibodies, the immunoglobulin IgG levels, the liver histology, and absence of viral hepatitis. So a point of one is given if ANA or SMA is positive in one is to 40 titer, Point two is given if ANA or SMA is positive in 1 is to 80 titer or LKMA is positive in 1 is to 40 titer or SLA is positive. 
point two is given when IgG levels are more than 1.1 times the upper normal limit, and point one is given when IgG is more than upper normal limit. If liver histology parameters are typical of autoimmune hepatitis, point two is given. However, if the features are just compatible with autoimmune hepatitis, point one is given. The absence of viral hepatitis assigns a point of one, a point of two. So, if the total score is six, the probable autoimmune hepatitis, probable autoimmune hepatitis is given as the diagnosis. Uh, and if the score is more or equal to seven, it is uh, given as definite autoimmune hepatitis. I now invite Dr. Neha Nigam, ma'am, to discuss about the role of liver biopsy and present some representative cases. So as we all know, the role of liver biopsy is very important to diagnose the autoimmune hepatitis. So first, we have to understand what is the normal histology of a liver. This is a representative, diagrammatic representation and the representative histopathological picture of a SNS, which is bounded by the portal tract at one end and the central vein on other, another end. In between area is divided into the three zones, zone one, two, and three. The hyper view showing the portal tract, which shows the presence of the portal venule, hepatic arteriole, and the accompanying bile duct. This is the interface between the portal mesenchyme and the hepatocytes. And the layer next to the portal tract, layer of the hepatocyte, which is next to the portal tract, is known as a limiting plate. So the histopathology contributes tremendously in the diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis, and it has a various roles. The most important role is to support or confirm the clinical diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis. Considering the typical features of the autoimmune hepatitis, which are interphase hepatitis, empiripolysis, and hepatocytic rosette formation. The compatible features are the features of chronic hepatitis with lymphocytic infiltration without all features of typical histology, and the atypical features, which are suggestive of the other diagnosis, such as the biliary diseases, viral hepatitis, or NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. So coming to the typical features of the autoimmune hepatitis, first is the interface hepatitis. Notice in 84 to 98% of the patients with autoimmune hepatitis. So this is a portal tract showing marked expansion by the mononuclear cells. And this is a layer next to the portal tract. And this layer of the hepatocyte is damaged by the inflammatory cells. The cells are seen in, infiltrating into the hepatocytes. So this is called as the interface hepatitis. This is the hyper view showing the portal tract. This is a hepatic arteriole, portal venule, and the presence of significant number of the mononuclear inflammatory cells. These cells are infiltrating into the adjacent parenchyma and damage the hepatocytes. So the, this is called as a typical interface hepatitis. The predominance of the plasma cells were noted. This is the cluster of the plasma cells seen in the lobule. Hepatocytic empiripolysis is also one of the characteristic feature of the autoimmune hepatitis. Empiripolysis is called when the intact plasma cell <coughs> or lymphocytes are seen engulfing by the hepatocyte or present in the cytoplasm of the hepatocyte. So this is the mature lymphocyte which is seen inside the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes. Presence of the nuclear remnant is not considered as a peripolysis. The cells should be of intact. Hepatocytic rosettes can be seen in 40 to 50% of the cases. So this is the arrangement of the hepatocytes around the clearly identifiable central lumen. So for calling it as a rosette, central lumen should be present. Just clustering of a hepatocyte doesn't, has not been considered as a rosette formation as it is only indicating the regenerative activity. <clears throat> so I'm presenting the first case. It is, a, it is of 12 year female patient presented with a progressive increased jaundice from last five months, abdominal distension with pedal edema from two months. On hematological investigations, the parameters are nearly normal with the patient is slightly anemic. However, the coagulation profile is deranged. On biochemical investigations, the total bilirubin along with the conjugated bilirubin is increased. 
the transaminases are raised along with the alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamate transferases so the possible etiologies are wilson disease the autoimmune hepatitis and the viral hepatitis so the wilson workup showed normal serum ceruloplasmin level hepatic copper levels and the urinary level urinary copper levels autoimmune workup shows the raised levels of the immunoglobulin g the 17140 which is more than 1.1 times of upper normal limit however the auto antibodies for anti neutrophilic antibodies anti smooth muscle actin antibodies and anti lkm antibodies were negative the viral workup for hepatitis b c a and e are negative so we received the liver biopsy and this is a reticulin stain showing the distorted lobular architecture this is the formation of the incomplete nodule and the architecture is distorted the portal tract this is the core of the liver biopsy showing the portal tract which is expanded by the mononuclear inflammatory cells edema along with the mark interface hepatitis so this is the hyperview showing the expanded portal tract and my moderate to marked interface activity is also noted fair number of the hepatocytes are showing pseudo sna transformation or the rosette formation with the centrally identifiable lumen which is better delineated in the reticulin stain this is the reticulin stain showing the pseudo rosetting of the hepatocytes fair number of areas are also showing the emperipolysis So on hyperview, there is the presence of the intact, hepato, uh, intact lymphocytes within the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes. So emperipolysis is also noted in this case. So the histopathology is typical of autoimmune hepatitis with the modified histological activity index grade 12 bar 18 and the stage 5 bar 6. So coming to the simplified scoring system for the autoimmune hepatitis, this case. Has scored for the probable autoimmune hepatitis. However, the liver histology is of typical autoimmune hepatitis. So probably this is the case of the autoimmune hepatitis zero negative with the modified hepatitic activity index grade twelve and the stage five, which is an incomplete cirrhosis. The patient has treated with the st uh, steroids along with the azathioprine for last two and a uh, half years, and our last follow up showed that. normalization of the bilirubin levels along with the transaminase levels so searching the various articles the zero negative or the antibody negative autoimmune hepatitis is labeled in absence of the anti neutrophilic antibodies asma antibodies lkm antibodies and ama antibodies at presentation it comprises of 10 to 20% of the autoimmune hepatitis cases resembles the type 1 autoimmune hepatitis in all respects including the histology and it has a good response to the treatment liver histology is required for the diagnosis so now coming to the next role of the liver biopsy is in the cases which are presenting as a acute hepatitis or acute presentation having the indeterminate pathology the acute presentation of hepatitis uh, autoimmune hepatitis occurs in 20% of the patients and minority of the patients are presented as acute liver failure and in 20% of those the cause remains indeterminate so this is an article published in hepatology journal 2011 by the strevit et al and they have identified 72 patients with autoimmune uh, acute liver failure and based on the histological features they have suggested the probable autoimmune etiology in acute liver failure settings so presence of the central perivenulitis predominant plasma cells in the inflammatory infiltrate presence of portal tract lymphoid aggregate along with a specific pattern of the massive hepatic necrosis 4 and 5 these all four features in combination suggest the probable autoimmune etiology in the settings of the acute liver failure <clears throat> so they have described the various patterns of the massive hepatic necrosis and the patterns of concern in respect to the autoimmune hepatitis are the pattern 4 and 
So what we have in massive hepatic necrosis pattern four is the multi SNR necrosis or massive hepatic necrosis. So this is the core showing necrosed hepatocytes along with the neocholangular proliferation. This is the neocholangular proliferation uh, bounded by the uh, surrounding the portal tract. So this is the massive hepatic necrosis with neocholangular proliferation. And along with that, the central lobular hemorrhagic necrosis should also be present. So this is the area of the central vein and the surrounding area is showing the hemorrhagic necrosis. There is predominance of the lymphomononuclear cells along with the plasma cells. So this is a massive hepatic necrosis along with the central lobular hemorrhagic necrosis, typical of pattern four. Coming to the pattern five, this is the portal tract, which is showing the mononuclear inflammatory cells interface hepatitis. This is the island of the hepatocytes. This is again a viable hepatocytes and in between area is showing necrosis. So this is a large area of the confluent necrosis on the background of the chronic hepatitis. We can also appreciate the lymphoid aggregate. So this is the massive hepatic necrosis pattern five. Apart from the specific pattern of the massive hepatic necrosis, there should be presence of the predominant plasma cells. This is the oil immersion view showing the plasma cells, portal lymphoid aggregates. Here we can see the portal lymphoid aggregates along with the central perivenulitis. So the mononuclear inflammatory cells are damaging the central vein and the surrounding lymphocytes. On high power view, the oil immersion view, the inflammatory cells are damaging the central vein along with the perivenular hepatocytes. And there is also the predominance of the plasma cells. So I'm presenting the second case, which is of three year female and the patient presented as a fever with decreased appetite. And after four or five days presented with the jaundice and high colored urine. After 16 days of complaint, the patient developed generalized abdominal distension and decreased urine output. On general examination, a terrace was present and there was no KF ring on ophthalmological examination. Systemic, systemic examination showed distended abdomen. However, no organic value is noted. Systemic examination, other systemic examinations were within normal limits. The radiological investigation does not reveal any underlying chronic liver disease. So on hematological investigation, the patient showed deranged coagulation profiles. The biochemical investigations show raised bilirubin levels with the raised direct bilirubin, raised transaminases around five times upper normal limit, raised level of the alkaline phosphatases, gamma glutamyl transferases, and high levels of the blood ammonia. 144. So with the clinical diagnosis of the acute liver failure, the clinician kept the uh, differential diagnosis of acute viral hepatitis, Wilson disease, and autoimmune hepatitis. And in the settings of the acute liver failure, it is very important to identify the etiology as it is the most important predictor of uh, survival. So the viral mar uh, markers for hepatitis B, C, A, E, parovirus, CMV, and Epstein-Barr virus were negative. The Wilson workup showed normal serum celluloplasmin level, normal hepatic copper, and normal levels of the urinary copper. And there were no KF ring on ophthalmological examination. The autoimmune workup showed positive antinuclear antibodies, one uh, positive at one is 200 dilution, positive anti-smooth muscle actin antibodies, two positive at one is to 40 dilution, and raised levels of the IgG, immunoglobulin G, which is 70, 150, more than 1.1 times upper normal limit. We received the linear course of the liver biopsy of this case. This is the linear core of the liver biopsy showing marked acinar disarray. This is the Orsin stain, which is applied to identify the underlying chronicity of the biopsy or the tissue, which showed no underlying mature fibrosis. So this is the portal tract showing no, under, no significant fibrosis or any fibrous septa. This is a large vessel showing internal control of the Orsin stain. So on hyperview, 
this is a core showing mark snr disarray and there is a uh, approximation of the portal tracks this is one portal track and this is another portal track and you can see there are three portal tracks which are approximated and in between areas are showing necrosis so these are two portal tracks with a central vein the uh, portal tracks are approximated in between hepatocytes are damaged with the central perivenulitis in this photomicrograph you can appreciate this is a single core which is folded in this way and this is the portal tract these are the viable hepatocytes and adjacent to this portal tract large area of confluent necrosis is noted so this is a large area of confluent necrosis which signifies the pattern of massive hepatic necrosis pattern 5 the background of chronic hepatitis along with the area of confluent necrosis apart from that there is a predominance of plasma cells these all are the plasma cells indicated by red arrow oil immersion view of emperipolysis engulfment of the mature lymphocyte by the hepatocytes so this is the case of acute liver failure and what are the features of histopathology is the central perivenulitis predominance of the portal plasma cells and the massive hepatic necrosis pattern 5 so these are the features of probable autoimmune hepatitis and the liver biopsy is given as a diagnosis of consistent with autoimmune hepatitis patient has treated with the steroids along with azathioprine and after three months of follow-up the transaminase level were decreased with normal coagulation profile so in the settings of the acute liver failure it is very important to differentiate between the autoimmune hepatitis and the viral hepatitis so there are some pointer, pointers for the diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis such as the massive hepatic necrosis pattern 4 5 the predominance of the plasma cells lymphoid aggregate lymphoplasmacytic infil inflammation along with the central perivenulitis the features which are indicating the underlying viral etiology is the pattern massive hepatic necrosis pattern 1 2 3 the predominant mixed inflammation buffer cell hyperplasia and neutrophilic infiltration of the bile ducts as we all know the etiology is the most important predictor of the survival it is important to identify the etiology as the administrating the corticosteroid might avoid the need of liver transplantation the diagnosis is difficult because it may have the normal igg levels autoantibodies are non specific and the usual features are not present in the acute settings so the histopathology may help in reaching the diagnosis as well as predictor of the prognosis in alf now coming to the other important role of the liver biopsy is to exclude the coexisting entities such as the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic steto hepatitis so here presenting our third case which is of 54 year female presenting with a dyspepsia since one year patient is a type 2 diabetic hypothyroid general and systemic examinations were within normal limit the ultrasound abdomen showed the fatty liver grade 2 however no underlying chronic liver disease was noted on hematological investigations the parameters are largely within normal limit the biochemical investigations show the raised level of the transaminases the ast alt levels were raised around three times of upper normal limit the fasting glucose is 102 122 mg per dl and the triglycerides were raised the autoantibodies show positivity for anti-nuclear antibodies and anti-smooth muscle actin antibodies. The IgG levels were within normal limits, 1410, and viral markers were negative. So with the raised transaminases and positive autoantibody markers, the differential diagnosis of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or autoimmune hepatitis were kept. For this case, we received the liver biopsy. This is the biopsy showing the SNR disarray and mild architectural distortion. This is the portal tract. This is again a 
incomplete portal tract visible in this picture and in between area the hepatocytes are showing macrovesicular steatosis so the chiefly the uh, steatosis is involving the uh, in the zone 3 and zone 2 hepatocytes on hyper view there is a presence of macrovesicular steatosis which is displacing the nuclear to the periphery fair number of the hepatocytes are showing ballooning degeneration here with the red arrow hepatocyte is showing ballooning degeneration which is a swelling of the hepatocytes along with the rarefication of the cytoplasm and clumping of the intermediate filaments so this is a mesens trichoma stain showing portal periportal fibrosis along with the occasional bridging fibrosis so this is a central vein and this is the portal area the fibrosis is involving the portal area with the periportal region and the bridging fibrosis on high power view the pericellular fibrosis noted this is a chicken wire type of fibrosis which is encircling the ballooned up hepatocytes so this is characteristic of the steatohepatitis whether the non alcoholic steatohepatitis or alcoholic steatohepatitis along with the above mentioned features we could also appreciate the moderate mononuclear inflammation in the portal tract with mild to moderate interphase hepatitis presence of the plasma cells in the infiltrate and foci of the empiripolysis this is the plasma cell which is engulfing by the cytoplasm of the hepatocytes this is the hyper view showing the same so what we have uh, in this case or summarizing the features of this case we have the mild to moderate interface hepatitis lymphoplasmacytic inflammation hepatocytic pseudorositing and occasional empiripolysis we are also having the mild steatosis amounting 25 to 30% the ballooning degeneration lobular inflammation along with the pericellular fibrosis so this case is diagnosed as a autoimmune hepatitis concomitant with the non alcoholic steatohepatitis the patient is treated with a low dose of steroids and after uh, two years of follow up the transaminase levels were within normal limits however the triglycerides and blood glucose levels are deranged so searching the literature there are various articles which are showing the presence of non alcoholic steatohepatitis along with the autoimmune hepatitis this is a study by the xavier et al which have included the 73 patients in their cohort of autoimmune hepatitis and they histologically evaluate the uh, evaluate for the features of the non alcoholic fatty liver disease and what they have found that around 14% of the cases of autoimmune hepatitis there was presence of simple steatosis and in around 16% of the cases along with the autoimmune hepatitis non alcoholic steatohepatitis is present this is again a, a poster which is presented in the hepatology journal this is the multicentric study retrospective study to incident uh, to study the incidence of the autoimmune hepatitis and non alcoholic fatty liver disease so they have included the 580 patients and found 21.2% of the patients with concomitant non alcoholic fatty liver disease however the non uh, concomitant non alcoholic steatohepatitis was seen in 2.7% of the cases only so the uh, it is important to diagnose nash in the settings of the autoimmune hepatitis as it accelerates the rate of damage and more likely to present with the cirrhosis the patients of the nash or nafeld a high prevalence of autoantibodies are present around 20 to 40% and response to standard therapy is not helpful always as the corticosteroid may worsen the nash liver biopsy is essential for differentiating both the entities and to document the coincident nafeld with autoimmune hepatitis so now i now invite dr uh, nile to present rest of the cases liver biopsy also plays a crucial role to identify overlap syndromes and variant syndromes 
The term overlap syndrome is reserved for cases showing overlap in clinical, serological, biochemical, and histological features and should not be used for cases of otherwise classic PVC or PAC showing interface hepatitis and portal plasma cells. The next case is a 46 years old female who presented with intermittent jaundice with pruritus since one year. Her preliminary investigations revealed anemia with increased total bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin, transaminases, and alkaline phosph phosphatases. So considering these preliminary investigations, a possibility of hepatic cholestatic pathology was rendered and she was proceeded with further investigations that revealed increased IgG level and positivity for anti-mitochondrial antibody and anti-smooth muscle acting antibody. Rest of the an antibodies uh, were negative and the viral markers were also negative. So following these investigations, she, she was proceeded with liver biopsy that showed mild lobular disarray with expanded portal tract. On higher magnification, you can see this portal tract is expanded by moderate amount of lymphomononuclear cells with lymphoid aggregate and moderate interface hepatitis. Here you can see there is uh, foci of spotty necrosis with presence of lobular acidophilic bodies. Uh, these are round eosinophilic bodies with presence of eccentrically located pycnotic nucleus that indicate hepatocytic necrosis. A uh, few uh, foci of empiripolysis were also seen. The, uh, this uh, red arrow indicates empiripolysis. This is the higher magnification of the same. Frequently, hepatocytic rosettes were also seen. This is the reticulin stain delineating the same. Uh, in few portal tracts, the periportal hepatocytes were showing rarefied eosinophilic cytoplasm, which is known as the halo effect that indicates the underlying biliary pathology, along with presence of mild bile ductular damage. So this is the bile duct showing the ductular damage with adjoining hepatic arteriole. Few portal tracts shows lymphocytic duct damage with predominance of plasma cells as indicated by red arrows. So to diagnose a case of AIH PBC overlaps, Paris diagnostic criteria must be met that includes AIH features and PBC features. And each of these each of these features include three criteria. That is ALT levels more than five times upper normal limit, increased IgG levels that is more than two times upper normal limit or positive SMA, and liver biopsy that is suggestive of that with moderate to severe interface hepatitis or lobular acidophilic bodies. The features diagnostic of PBC are more than two times increased levels of ALP or GGT, increased levels of GGT more than five times upper normal limit, positive AMA, and presence of florid duct lesions on liver biopsy. In this present case, we have increased levels of IHC with histological evidence of moderate interface hepatitis, lobular acidophilic bodies, increased level of ALP and positivity for AMA. Therefore, this, this case was diagnosed with autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis overlap syndrome. And she was treated with corticosteroids and UC, UDCA. And on, on follow-up, she had shown biochemical remission. So several studies have been conducted across the globe that documented that this, uh, the cases in this overlap syndrome account for 5 to 9% cases and predominantly affect middle aged to elderly females. Paris criteria is specific and sensitive diagnostic tool to establish the diagnosis and cases that do not fit Paris criteria, treatment is advised according to the predominant phenotype and therefore histopathology has an important role. Uh, The next case is of a 60 years old female that presented with excessive pruritus since one month. Her preliminary investigations revealed deranged coagulation profile and increased total bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, and mild increase in ALT. Her IgG levels were also increased with 2 plus positivity in ANA. Her rest of the uh, autoimmune uh, workup and viral uh, workup was negative. And therefore, a suggestion of cholestatic pathology or cholestatic hepatic pathology was rendered. And she was proceeded with radiological investigation. Uh, this is the MRCP image that shows the intrahepatic biliary radicals showing dilatation and bleeding appearance. 
and therefore a possibility of primary sclerosis in cholangitis or an overlap syndrome with hepatic injury was rendered and she was proceeded with liver biopsy that showed uh, mild lobular distortion with occasional bridging uh, septa so here you can see that portal tract showing fibrosis with occasional bridging fibrosis uh, most of the portal tracts were showing uh, ex were expanded by fibrosis uh, this is the bile ductile showing periductular fibrosis uh, we are classically known as onion skin fibrosis which is better indicated on the mason trichome stain here again the portal tract is expanded by fibrosis with moderate interface hepatitis with presence of amparipolysis and hepatocytic rosette so to diagnose a case of autoimmune hepatitis and PSC overlap, there should be definite or probable AIH with cholangiographic evidence of PSC. In the present case, we have portal inflammation with moderate interface hepatitis, 2 plus positivity for ANA, raised IgG levels and negative viral serology with histological evidence of periductal fibrosis and the MRCP features of structuring and beating of pile ducts. And therefore, this case was diagnosed as autoimmune hepatitis with primary sclerosis and cholangitis overlap syndrome and she was treated with UDC and low dose of corticosteroids and she showed significant decline in biochemical parameters on follow-up. So the recent literature on this entity says that this overlap syndrome account for 1.7 1, 1. to 12.5% cases and is predominantly seen in children and young adults and shows a male predilection. And the diagnosis is based on histology and cholangiographic findings. And they may include both the large duct and the small duct. And histopathology is particularly important in the small duct as in cholangiographic findings in small duct may be normal or can show structuring and beating appearance. And this is very important because the survival is better in this case. Now I hand over to Dr. Neha ma'am to continue with the rest of the presentation. So the another histological contribution is the assessment of the necroinflammatory activity which is a grade and extent of fibrosis which is a stage as it has a role in disease monitoring as well as in the prognosis. So this is a semi-quantitative scoring system the hepatitic activity index given by the modified Ishex et al. It includes the four parameters, the interface hepatitis, confluent necrosis, the spotty necrosis, and the portal inflammation. All of the parameters are semi-quantitatively graded in from zero to four, except the confluent necrosis, which has graded from zero to six. And the aggregate score uh, given was 18. This is the hepatitic activity index, the grade maximum score of 18, and it defines the necroinflammatory activity from a score 1 to 3, minimal activity, 4 to 8 is the mild activity, 9 to 12 is the moderate, and 13 to 18 is the severe necroinflammatory activity. This is the staging system given by the Ishex et al. It includes the stages from 1 to 6. In stage 1, there is a portal fibrosis. Stage 2, portal with few of the portal tracts are showing periportal fibrosis. In 3, most of the portal tracts are showing periportal fibrosis. Stage 4, occasional bridging fibrosis is noted. Stage 5, incomplete cirrhosis with the frequent bridging and formation of the incomplete nodules. In stage 6 is the cirrhosis or formation of the complete nodules. So the staging and grading has the prognostic implications. This is a study which showed the prognostic value of the clinical variables and liver histology for development of the fibrosis and cirrhosis. What they have found that out of 64 cases for which follow biopsies were available, they found the only histological parameters which predict the fibrosis progression were the total inflammation score given by the hepatitic activity index. So the baseline liver histology at the diagnosis provides the important prognostic information of cirrhosis development. It is also important for disease monitoring as Compared to the serological markers, the liver biopsy found superior to the disease monitoring. This is quoted by the study in which about half of the patient with the normal serum parameters still showed the residual histological activity of 4 of 5 with the risk of fibrosis progression. The persistent histological activity is also signifies the prognostic significance. As the patients attaining the histological remission in the follow biopsies, the histological remission with the histological activity index of less than three showed the higher transplant free survival in comparison to those which are having the persistent histological activity more than four. 
So coming to the role of liver biopsy in the management and detecting the response to therapy. So the histological findings, in addition to the clinical laboratory parameters, used to guide the treatment, especially in the cases with the atypical features, such as acute onset, concurrent diseases, and the overlaps. Bridging and multi SNN necrosis is an absolute indication. However, treatment is not indicated for the inactive cirrhosis, mild portal inflammation with no symptoms and minimal biochemical abnormalities. According to the American Association Study of Liver Diseases and European Association of the Study of Liver Diseases, they quote in their most recent guidelines that the liver biopsy at presentation to establish the diagnosis and guide the treatment in all patients of suspected autoimmune hepatitis. Along with that, biopsy is indicated to prove the histological remission in the post-treatment patients. So for calling it the complete histological remission, the histological activity index should be three or less than three. There should be mild portal chronic inflammation and marked decrease in the lobular necroinflammatory activity. So this is the case uh, photomicrograph from the case of the uh, biopsy showing remission. This is the portal tract showing no increased inflammation, no interface hepatitis, and the histological activity index is less than three. So when to perform a liver biopsy? When there is normalization of the biochemical parameters, biopsy is indicated as it is a prerequisite to stop the maintenance corticosteroid therapy. And if there is a persistent elevation of the biochemical parameters, the biopsy is indicated to modify the dose and the treatment. So now coming to our SGPGI experience, what we have experienced from 2014 to 2021, we received the 237 biopsies from the 220 patients of autoimmune hepatitis. 23 biopsies were post-treatment biopsies and out of which 10 patients are showing remission and 13 biopsies are not in remission. As known in the literature, 50 to 55% of the biopsies are not showing signs of remission or minimal histological uh, activity despite of the biochemical normalization. Out of 214 cases, most of the cases belongs to the autoimmune hepatitis type 1 and 2, which were subdivided based on the presence of the autoantibodies, the autoimmune hepatitis 1, the positive for antinuclear antibodies and ASMA positivity, whereas type 2 is characterized by the positivity for LKM antibodies, most commonly seen in the pediatric age group and have an aggressive course. So 185 patients are in autoimmune hepatitis 1 and 2. The PBC overlap is seen in 14 patients. Primary sclerosing cholangitis overlap is seen in 6 patients. Non-alcoholic steatohepatitis in 5 patients. Drug-induced autoimmune hepatitis 3 patients. We have one case of the seronegative autoimmune hepatitis. So the, comparing the cases between the pediatric and the adult population, most they both have the equal proportion of the cases, 49.1 in pediatric population and 50.9% cases in adult population. Most predominant uh, subtype is autoimmune hepatitis in both of the categories. And the cases with the PBC overlap, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, drug-induced autoimmune hepatitis, all of the cases belongs to the adult age group. And the autoimmune hepatitis predominantly involve the pediatric age group. The most common presentation in autoimmune hepatitis is the chronic hepatitis, 81 patient. However, significant number of patients are showing chronic uh, liver disease, cirrhosis, incomplete and complete, 41.4% of patients. ACLF seen in 10 patients. Acute liver failure is seen in 8 patients. And 9 patients are presenting with the acute hepatitis. So the various institutes in India share their experience on autoimmune hepatitis. This is a study from the Bombay Hospital and Medical Research Mumbai shared their 19-year experience. This is an older study from SGPGI shared year experience. This is the unpublished data from ILBS shared their seven year study and we are uh, sharing our eight year experience. So most of the study showed the age of presentation between the 36 to 45 years of age. We have lower age at presentation 26 years. Females are predominant population and most common presentation in each study is the chronic hepatitis. hepatitis. Except the study from Bombay Hospital, they showed most common presentation at cirrhosis. However, it may be explained because they don't have any biopsy proven cirrhosis in 25% of cases. The type 1 autoimmune hepatitis is the most common type seen. Type 2 autoimmune hepatitis seen in 8.6% of population in our study 
and 8.2% uh, population in study from ILPS. So this is our data from the Asia Pacific region on autoimmune hepatitis. And this is the demographics showing the various regions from the Asia, Asia Pacific uh, uh, region. So as compared to the East Asia countries like Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, the South uh, Asia countries, Pakistan and India, showed lesser female predominance along with the younger age of presentation. And the most common uh, or most of the patients are cirrhotic at presentation. So with this, we conclude our presentation that autoimmune hepatitis has very clinical presentations and histological features. The liver biopsy is critical in diagnosis and an independent factor to distinguish it from the other diseases. Liver histology is a standard for grading the necroinflammatory activity. It can yield the important prognostic information, including the stage of fibrosis and response to therapy. The autoimmune hepatitis in the settings of acute liver failure, variant syndromes, the coincident diseases form a small but challenging phenotype. However, the clinical pathological correlation is necessary and essential for the optimal patient management. Thank you.